Hi, I'm Jonathan Myberg from Shearwater, and uh, we just played uh, the first show of our 2012 tour uh, for DMX here at the Minad Cat in Austin. Animal Joy is our new record for Sub Pop. Um, it's our fourth record. Our previous three records came out on Matador. And I kind of thought of those as uh, like a trilogy or a complete piece. We played uh, a show last year, last January, here in Austin, uh, where we played all three records as one long piece, which was awesome. It was kind of a, a great way to say goodbye to those songs. Um, and for the new record, we wanted to take a different approach, both with the songwriting and with the recording. And uh, I think we succeeded. I think it's a really different kind of record for us. For the new record, we decided to deny ourselves some of the tools that we'd used before on other records, so the elaborate string sections, woodwinds, and orchestral instruments. Um, this time, we wanted to get back just to the sound of a band playing. And so it was you know, electric guitars, bass, drums, piano. But then, before the end of the record, we had to put the harp on. So they have one orchestral <laughs> instrument. But it was uh, sort of a, I don't want to say back to basics exactly, because it's actually a very elaborate record. We wanted to use just a traditional rock band instrumentation. The last few records that we made, I thought it started to get a little bit cerebral, like um, the, the cover of the last record, The Golden Archipelago, um, you can see this sort of beautiful scene that you're looking at from a distance, and I think that record kind of sounds like that. The new record, the cover shows, you know, this beast charging out at you, and I think the record sounds like that. I, I wanted to make a record that um, didn't just have a head, I wanted it to have a body also. We start our tour for the record on Monday in Kansas City, um, and then we're going up to meet uh, with Sharon Van Etten, and we're going to tour with her for a few weeks. Uh, and uh, then we're going to come back to Austin. We're playing here on the 4th. We're going to be playing a lot of shows at South by Southwest. Then we're going to Europe for a month. Then we come back, then we're going to be touring with St. Vincent in the U.S. That's exciting. Yeah. Are you, how, how many takes? Do you know yeah, how many you're doing with? Uh, three, we're going to be doing three weeks with St. Vincent and we're playing the Sasquatch Festival. Then we're going to go back to Europe and then I'm going to go to the Falklands for a month, which will give everybody a break. I'm a musician as my day job, but I moonlight as a scientist or a, a researcher. Um, and I'm going back to the Falklands uh, where I've been several times over the years. Um, to do a study in August of a bird called the striated caracara that uh, I did my graduate research on. And it'll be a really nice antidote to the touring life, I think, to be sitting on an island you know, 700 miles from Antarctica with uh, these strange birds of prey for a month. I think it's really going to do me good. And it'll give everybody else a break because there's no way we can tour during that month if I'm yeah. not in the country. <laughs> It's a funny, I mean, touring is strange because it really does, um, it's a weird thing to do to be in a different place every single night. Um, it does strange things to your brain and you never quite get used to it. But I think these guys are up for it and having been away from it now for more than a year, I'm ready to, to get out and do it again and have a lot of excitement, a lot of hope about this record and these songs. We've always been kind of a critical success as a band, um, and then, you know, as far as broad popular appeal, I'd say that's eluded us. Um, but, you know, you can't control that. All you can do is hope that enough people will be interested in what you're doing that you'll be able to continue to do it. And thus far, that's been true, so that's, I mean, that's all I can hope for. People tend to think in this day and age that music is kind of free, 
and the way I look at it is that if you you know if you listen to it, if you steal it and listen to it and like it and then don't buy it, then you're really hurting the band. Like that's bad. If you listen to it and you don't like it, sort of no harm no foul. Right. But um, you know, if everybody who likes it, you know, just please buy it, um, then we'll get to keep making more.